You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 15th of October. PM Modi calls India one of the most happening countries in terms of telecom. India's Jay Shankar arrives in Pakistan to attend SCO summit. And Bangladesh says India's comments on attacks on Hindus uncalled for. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday inaugurated the 8th edition of the International Telecommunication Union World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly in New Delhi. This is the first time the ITU WTSA has been hosted in India and the Asia Pacific. PM Modi highlighted the major developments in the telecom sector and said that today our country is one of the most happening countries in the world in terms of telecom and related technology. He emphasized how India emerged as the second largest 5G market in the world. The IMC is Asia's largest digital technology forum and has become a well-known platform globally for showcasing innovative solutions, services and state-of-the-art use cases for industry, government, academia, startups and other key stakeholders in the technology and telecom ecosystem. The event will feature over 400 exhibitors and 900 startups with participation from over 120 countries. It also aims to showcase more than 900 technology use case scenarios, host over 100 sessions and feature discussions with over 600 global and Indian speakers. Telecom and its related technology in the world of the world's happening countries. Bharat जहां 120 करोड़ यानी 1200 मिलियन मोबाइल फोन यूजर्स हैं, भारत जहां 95 करोड़ यानी 950 मिलियन इंटरनेट यूजर्स हैं, भारत जहां दुनिया का 40 परसेंट से अधिक का रियल टाइम डिजिटल ट्रांजैक्शन होता है। भारत जिसने डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी को लास्ट माइल डिलीवरी का इफेक्टिव टूल बनाकर दिखाया है वहां ग्लोबल टेलीकम्युनिकेशन के स्टैंडर्ड और फ्यूचर पर चर्चा ग्लोबल गुड का भी माध्यम बनेगी and in a major diplomatic meltdown, India on Monday expelled six Canadian diplomats from the country, including the acting High Commissioner Stuart Wheeler. The move came after India summoned Wheeler over a diplomatic communication which called India's High Commissioner to Canada, Sanjay Verma and other top diplomats as persons of interest in killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijar. While Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Ottawa is expelling the diplomats labelled as person of interest in the Niger assassination case, India had already called back its envoy and other diplomats contradicting Canada's statement of expulsion. Trudeau in a press conference also alleged that diplomats were collecting information about Canadians and passing it on to organised crime to attack Canadians. He said Canada will never tolerate the involvement of foreign governments in threatening and killing Canadian citizens on Canadian soil, terming it an unacceptable violation of Canada's sovereignty. Relations between New Delhi and Ottawa have largely been lukewarm for over a year after Trudeau linked Indian government with Niger's killing. The relations touched rock bottom earlier this week, with Ottawa demanding New Delhi to waive off diplomatic immunity of six diplomats, including the High Commissioner. In response, New Delhi issued a strong-worded statement slamming the Trudeau government's allegations as preposterous imputations and ascribed the accusations as political agenda centered around vote bank politics. Premiers of India, Belarus, Kyrgyzstan on Tuesday arrived in Pakistan's strict security locked capital Islamabad to attend the highly anticipated 23rd summit of SEO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. 
the government has announced a three-day public holiday in Islamabad with schools and businesses shut and large contingents of police and paramilitary forces deployed. It is for the first time in a decade that an Indian foreign minister will travel to Pakistan, even as the ties between the two neighbours remain frosty over the Kashmir issue and cross-border terrorism emanating from Pakistan. Both India and Pakistan have already ruled out any bilateral talks between Jay Shankar and his Pakistani counterpart. The threat alert has been high in the South Asian nation ahead of the SEO summit meeting, especially after the killing of two Chinese engineers and shooting to death of 21 miners. Moving on, nearly two decades after the devastating 2005 earthquake, schools in POJK remain in rooms, leaving students and teachers to grapple with the challenges of inadequate education facilities. A report. Teachers in a remote village some 8 kilometers from Chinari city of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir have lamented the utter negligence of the authorities to rebuild their schools nearly 20 years after the deadly 2005 earthquake in the region. School students in many areas are still forced to study under an open sky due to the situation. Locals blame that successive governments have only made big claims but no groundwork has been done to improve infrastructure across the occupied region. Residents of POJK say a complete overhaul of the region's infrastructure is urgently needed. However, they accuse the Pakistani government of turning a blind eye to their plight and continuing to discriminate against them. Days after India raised concerns over the violent incidents against minority Hindu population in Bangladesh during the Durga Puja festival, Dhaka has turned down the allegations, calling them baseless. India last week expressed serious concerns with Dhaka after a puja mandap was attacked and theft of a crown gifted by India's PM Modi from a Hindu shrine, calling them deplorable events. They follow a systematic pattern of desecration and damage to temples and deities that we have witnessed over several days now. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhi Jaiswal said in a statement and urged Dhaka to ensure the safety and security of Hindus and all minorities and their places of worship. Reacting to India's concern, Bangladesh Foreign Ministry said Dhaka finds such allegations baseless and assertions uncalled for. In a statement issued on Monday, the Foreign Office said only handful incidents of violence were reported on which government authorities acted promptly. Following the ouster of Sheikh Hasina, there has been incidents of attacks on the Hindu minority, considered close to Hasina's Awami League. India has repeatedly expressed concern over attacks on minorities. However, the interim government of Bangladesh had said such concerns are exaggerated. Sri Lanka will apply for membership of the BRICS and the New Development Bank. The island nation's newly appointed foreign minister, Vijita Herath, informed on Monday. Sri Lanka considers BRICS to be an effective partnership to realize aspiration for mutually beneficial cooperation, peace and development through strengthened and inclusive multilateralism within the framework of the UN Charter. Herath was quoted as saying by media outlet News First. He, however, added that due to the upcoming elections in the country, President Anurakumara Desanayake won't participate in the BRICS outreach summit and Sri Lanka will be represented by Foreign Affairs Secretary, who will place on record Sri Lanka's request for membership. BRICS is the grouping of emerging economies, with Brazil, Russia, India and China being the founding members of the bloc. In recent times, the bloc has seen growing interest by other countries, with Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia and UAE joining the grouping. 
Gujarat, a state known for its vibrant culture and rapid development, is also witnessing a remarkable transformation in the lives of its women. From community radio stations to self-help groups, women are playing a pivotal role in driving the state's social and economic progress. Riding her bike to her workplace, Dr. Neelam Tarvi, a radio jockey, embodies the spirit of progress and empowerment of women in Gujarat. As a member of the local tribal community, Neelam's broadcasts on Radio Unity showcase the rich cultural traditions and history of Narmada district which houses the grand statue of Unity. She, along with her fellow RJs, enthralls listeners with the stories of social change and women empowerment. Radio Unity 90 of Neelam, Neelam says it was Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of establishing a community radio station in this region which bore fruition on the Independence Day of 2021. माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी का एक स्वप्न था कि यहां पे एक रेडियो सेंटर बने कम्युनिटी रेडियो सेंटर बने और उसमें जो भी आरजे के तौर पे काम करते हैं वो लोकल और ट्राइबल लोग हों यहां पे हम लोग शो में भी विमेन एंपावरमेंट की बातें करते हैं द सक्सेस स्टोरीज ऑफ सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स इन गुजरात फर्दर एग्जेम्पलीफाई द लार्जर ट्रेंड ऑफ वुमेन playing a vital role in the state's economic and social progress. And the government's support has been a significant factor in the growth of such initiatives. Schemes like the Mukhya Mantri Mahila Utkarsh Yojana and the Mission Mangalam have offered financial backing, market linkages and training to self-help groups across Gujarat. Around 24 lakh women are currently active under 2 lakh Sakhi Mandals or self-help groups that are being managed to the tune of rupees 1000 crores through bank linkage. The government facilitates these women by providing subsidies, easy access to loans ranging from rupees 10,000 to rupees 1 lakh, as well as free stalls to reach a wider audience. From offering training to providing financial assistance for setting up businesses, the government has taken several steps to empower women entrepreneurs. Many women who previously worked as employees are now running their own businesses thanks to the financial assistance provided under both state and central government schemes such as the Prime Minister Street Vendors Atma Nirbhar Nidhi Scheme and the Deen Dayal Anteyodaya Yojana. सरकार को ऐसे हमको ये पूरा स्टॉल फ्री में मिलता है जैसे कि राखी का स्टॉल है नवरात्रि का स्टॉल है एयरपोर्ट स्टॉल है ये सब स्टॉल हमको फ्री में मिलता है और हम पूरे साल ये घर पे हैंडवर्क करते हैं इसके बाद हम ये सब 10 12 बहन का ग्रुप है सब हैंडवर्क करके ये स्टॉल में सब मिलके हम बेचते हैं इसके बाद स्टॉल में हमको सबसे अच्छा रिस्पांस मिलता है हमारा पूरा घर का ये खर्च भी हम निकाल सकते हैं इसमें से as Gujarat celebrates Vikas Sapta commemorating 23 years of PM Modi's leadership, these stories stand as testaments to the state's commitment to fostering a more inclusive and prosperous future for all. The dedication and support from the government through initiatives like community radio stations and self-help groups are creating a fertile ground for women's empowerment. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you soon. Thank you tomorrow.